you can learn about some feathered creatures you may only see during the winter months here in East Tennessee. Yeah, it's always amazing. Emily Stroud shows us what to expect at a free virtual event called Let's Welcome the Snowbirds. The University of Tennessee Arboretum Society has arranged for natural historian Stephen Lynn Bale's Zoom presentation this Thursday. It's called Let's Welcome the Snowbirds. And welcome to you. It's good to see you, even if it's virtually. Yes, even if it's virtually. Yeah, I'm sitting <laughs> in my dining room. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, I've been doing talks for them, live talks for a year, but then when the pandemic hit, uh, we had to stop that. But then Michelle Campras, their uh, education director, figured out how to do Zoom. And we've done one. This will be the second one. And this one primarily is about the birds that only spend their winter time here in the Tennessee Valley. Birds that nest in Canada or the Great Lakes or in New England, but the, the, it's harder to find food this time of year. I have a bird bath and usually I'm seeing robins and cardinals, maybe some doves, but there are gonna be some really interesting ones we can see. This is really an exciting year and we really need an exciting year. Uh, there's reports of evening grosbeaks, and an evening grosbeak is in the, related to a cardinal, so it's cardinal size, does not have a crest, but it's yellow, black, and white, and they're known as eruptive migrants. They nest in the uh, boreal forests of Canada and typically will uh, fly to the Great Lakes area to find food. This year, there's not much food, and so they're coming all the way to Tennessee to find food. Uh, from my research, it's been 25 years since these birds showed up, this species has shown up in Tennessee. And the reports I'm getting are Cates Cove, Maryville, and Townsend. Those people have them. You know you have them because they come to your feeders. They're large birds, yellow, black, and white, and they always travel in groups. So it's not gonna be one tiny little bird you're watching. It's gonna be 15 to 20 of these incredibly gorgeous birds. So we can really benefit the birds by giving them food, but there's benefits to us just by watching them. Watching birds, new studies have shown, studies in this country and also studies in Germany, that watching birds lowers our blood pressure and gives us a greater sense of well-being and happiness. And even to the point, the more birds we see, the better we feel. Your presentation this Thursday at seven o'clock is called Let's Welcome the Snowbirds. How can people take part? There is a, you go to the uh, UT Arboretum Society website, click there and scroll down and then you sign up. There's no charge. And again, I will be sitting here in my dining room and others will be sitting around in their, in their living rooms or wherever they're comfortable. Uh, and we'll talk about birds and the different kinds of birds you'll see in wintertime. Sounds fun. Stephen Lynn Bales, natural historian. So good to see you. And thank you for sharing your knowledge for free with people this Thursday. Well, and here's a surprising number from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The agency says more than 52 million adults feed birds. That's a lot of people interested in birds. I know my parents have some bird feeders. They love Are to sit you, on the do porch. Do you feed birds? I don't. I'm afraid yeah. I might not always provide the food and then they would depend on me. <laughs> I mean, if it's like my plants. You mean you know. and then they show up and they like. I know, I might forget. No, my parents, in all seriousness, they love to sit and look at the birds. They do. You, you don't want the birds to depend on you. That's sweet of you. That shows her, <laughs> her personality. It's very sweet. All right.